The boudoir photography landscape is much different than it was eight years ago when I opened my studio in St. Louis. Today what I want to do is break down exactly what I would do if I was starting my boudoir photography studio in 2024. Hey boudoir photographers, are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business working just 30 hours a month. That's right, just 30 hours a month. On this podcast, I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey there and welcome back. Now, I want to tell you, I know that I'm a day late. I'm very, very sorry about that. I also know that I only have the audio if you're listening to this on YouTube. Very sorry about that. Next week should be going back to normal with the holidays. Everything has been a little bit crazy. Now, although I've been a photographer since 2013, I built my St. Louis boudoir studio in 2016. At that point, boudoir photography was just becoming a thing. I mean, it had been around, but photographers niching to boudoir only was just starting to happen. I'm so thankful I was ahead of that craze. Now there are so many boudoir photographers, the competition is fierce. And if you're like most photographers, I know you're wondering, how do you stand out from the crowd? How do you get clients to book with you over the cheaper photographers down the street? How can you charge premium prices when the market is flooded with photographers charging cheaper prices, even boudoir photographers? The boudoir photography landscape is much different than it was eight years ago when I started. So what I'm doing today is breaking down exactly what I would do if I started my boudoir photography studio in 2024. Are you ready? Let's get started. The first step I would take to start a new and successful studio in 2024 is to understand what you actually need to make to run your business and then build a pricing list to make it happen. Most photographers bring home 30% of their total revenue. So to figure out how much money you need to make to run your business, you need to work backwards, which means we need to start with your salary goal. To be honest, this is where a lot of photographers go wrong. They hear other photographers talking about six figure years and multiple five figure months. And they think that that's the most obvious thing, that that's what they need to work towards. Plus, it sounds glamorous and cool to say that you're a six-figure photographer, but they don't actually realize what their expenses are, what they're going to need to pay themselves, what they need to do to bring that in. So instead, let's just talk about what you need to make per month. This could be just to replace your nine to five. It could give you and your family a little extra money for vacation. It really doesn't matter, but we need to have a goal of what you want to make per month to know what your total revenue is. We also want to build goals based on actual data. That's the type of goal that's actually reachable. So let's say that you want to make $3,500 a month. That's what you actually want to bring in. $3,500 divided by 30% is $11,666 per month or $140,000 a year in total revenue. Now, let's say that you have time for 10 clients per month. You would need a sales average of $1,116 per client, meaning each client would be worth $1,116. To make this happen, what you do is create a price list that would help you bring in that $1,116. What this price list would do is just guide your clients to that $1,100 album or wall portrait or whatever it is that you want her to purchase. The second step that I would take to start a new and successful studio in 2024 is to plan out exactly what my schedule would look like. The good thing about planning your schedule is it helps with your marketing strategy. You'll know exactly how many clients you need per month and you can plan in yearly sales to your marketing strategy to actually make sure that you stay booked when you want to be booked. There's a strategy to finding out how many clients your schedule can actually handle and forget the example in the previous step. We're starting fresh here. What you need to do is take the amount of hours you can work per month and multiply that by the number of weeks you plan to work per year. So let's say that you can work 25 hours per week and you plan to take four weeks off each year. Take that 25 hours and multiply that by 48 weeks. That means that you would have 1,200 hours per year to work. So a third of those hours will be dedicated to marketing and admin. So we're just going to go ahead and subtract that third. That leaves you with 800 hours left specifically for clients. Now, most photographers spend eight hours per client from initial contact to delivery of the product, meaning you'll have time for 100 clients per year. I know that sounds scary, but that's just eight to nine clients a month. 
So what you want to do is plan out your schedule with this information. Personally, I do better when I batch my work. I like to photograph sessions in one day, ordering sessions another day, and in post-production another day. So maybe that looks like four sessions on Tuesday, four ordering sessions on Wednesday, and marketing on Thursday, two weeks per month. The other two weeks you're working on editing, album ordering, delivery. Or maybe you prefer same day sales and you want to do one session a day every Tuesday or Thursday. Whatever you want to do, plan that out now and stick to it. It can always change, but try something out and then make adjustments as your business grows. Hey, I write a newsletter every week where I cover photography, business, marketing, strategy, industry happenings, client wins, and celebrations, and so much more. It is just for you, and you can get on the list right now at rebrand.ly slash TLC newsletter, and I'll also link that in the show notes as well. The third step I would take to start a new and successful studio in 2024 is to figure out exactly who my ideal client is. And I talk about this a lot. In fact, I'm pretty sure I talked about it in my last episode, but that just shows exactly how important it is to know your ideal client. I know that you've heard the saying, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. Well, we want to make sure that you're talking to a specific person who's going to pay the prices you need to make and who you actually enjoy photographing. To find this person, you need to really think about who she is. And let's get really specific. Let's narrow down her age, where she works, what she does for fun, where she does business locally. So for example, let's say that your ideal client is a mom in her 30s. You're not going to want to market at a bridal fair, you know? Now that's an obvious example, but those are the things you need to know to be able to attract the type of clients you want to photograph. Even what she wears and what she'd be photographed in in your studio. And I think that is more important than most photographers realize. So let's stick to your ideal client being a mom in her 30s. She's a millennial. She's probably not going to want to wear the same exact outfits as the 21-year-old models you might want to hire for portfolio building. I mean, she might, but not everything she wears, you know, there's going to be some different outfits in there. So you need to know who your ideal client is so that you can build your portfolio to attract that specific person. Knowing these things will make your marketing so much easier. The fourth step that I would take to start a new and successful studio in 2024 is to book out my schedule. At this point, I know who my ideal client is, so now I need to build a website that will easily convert leads into clients. And I call this my high converting website, and there's a lot of strategy behind it. For one thing, you need to make it obvious what she should do once she lands on your page, obviously book a session, If she doesn't book a session, then she would subscribe to your email list. But the other thing, your website should answer questions she needs answered before she books a session. It's like a journey that you're going to take these leads on, a journey to convert them into clients where you will give them the most amazing experience, of course. And then it's time to put yourself in front of your ideal client everywhere she turns around. She needs to think and know that you're the only option for her. I like to break this into short-term tactics and long-term tactics. Short-term tactics could include things like a bridal fair, women's show, marketing with other businesses, networking events, collaborations. And the good thing about these short-term tactics is that even though they are a bit of a hustle up front, they're also really great for long-term strategies as well. Long-term tactics are things like SEO or search engine optimization, blogging and email marketing, And these long-term strategies can be annoying upfront because you feel like you're doing so much work while seeing no results. But eventually you start booking sessions like crazy without any extra work because you put this work up front. This is exactly how I'm able to work less than 20 hours a month and still make multiple six figures a year because of the work that I did in 2017, 2018, 2019. If you get just one thing from this episode, I want you to understand how everything works together within your business. Do you see how pricing is affected by the number of sessions you need to book and how much time you actually have to work? And your marketing strategy is dependent on the number of clients that you need to book. If you only need five clients per month and SEO is bringing in four clients a month with ease on a regular basis, do you need to waste time and money on ads? And side note, I don't think that you ever need Facebook ads, but that's another topic for another day. So what I want you to do is lay the foundation of your business so that you can scale it with strategy and data. I'd love to take a second and ask for you to subscribe or hit that follow button depending on the platform that you're on and leave a review. It really does help so much. Plus, I love reading the reviews, of course. 
Thanks again for spending your time with me and I will be back with an episode next week all about portfolio building and it is definitely a don't miss. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.